It's that time again, World History 2 students. I'm in the VidNote zone, as you can see. Please get out your Unit 8 packets, turn to the 8-3 notes, and today we're going to talk about the events of World War II. The major events, all the way from the German invasion of Poland in 1939 to the two atomic bombs that the U.S. decides to drop on Japan in 1945. Let's talk. A background on this war. The major theaters of war included Africa, Europe, Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Effective leadership was essential to the Allied victory. And here you see the theaters of war. We're going to talk about this now. What is a theater of war? It's not where you put on a play. A theater is also a military term for an area where an armed conflict takes place. There are two theaters during World War II. The European theater, which took place in Europe and Africa and in the Atlantic Ocean, and the Pacific theater, which takes place in Asia and the Pacific Islands. What caused World War II? I'm going to talk about six different causes. Number one, aggression by the totalitarian powers of Italy with Mussolini, Germany with Hitler, and Japan with Hideki Tojo and the Emperor Hirohito. Number two, nationalism using militaristic governments. These three men used nationalism and a strong military in all of the wrong ways. They used their military might to seize foreign lands and create a sense of pride and common purpose among citizens. They used war to create nationalism, just like Napoleon did. Is that the right way to kill people in order to feel prideful? Number three, the failures of the Treaty of Versailles that we have talked about. Also, the weakness of the League of Nations Here's Woodrow Wilson. He created the League of Nations. But in this cartoon, everyone is throwing tomatoes at him because no one supports this in the United States. And that leads to World War II. Number five, appeasement caused World War II. Appeasement is the policy of using negotiation and compromise to avoid an armed conflict, which sounds good, but it's hard to appease Adolf Hitler, but that's what the European powers tried to do. It's Munich, a city in Germany, 1938. Britain, France, and Italy agree to give Hitler and the Nazis Czechoslovakia's Sudetenland in order to keep peace. Where is the Sudetenland? Here's Germany, here's Austria, and this yellow portion of Czechoslovakia is Sudetenland. Three million ethnic Germans live here. It's filled with coal and oil, and Germany wants it. They get it. But after Hitler gets what he wants, he then ignores the agreement between him and these European powers. He wants more, and he gets it. What else caused World War II? The tendencies toward isolationism and pacifism in both Europe and the U.S. What is pacifism? It's the belief that violence is always wrong and that all disputes should be settled by peaceful means. Maybe to stop a dictator like Hitler, you need to be violent to show him you mean business. Let's now talk about some of the major events of World War II. First, Germany invades Poland, September 1st, 1939. This starts the war. German forces use a quick hitting strategy with tanks called the Blitzkrieg, which is German for lightning war. And then Britain and France declare war on Germany two days later, September 3rd. The Soviet Union then allies itself with Germany, the Nazis, and Hitler. It doesn't take long. On September 28th, Poland surrenders to the Nazis and Hitler. Then Hitler and the Nazis go further west and the entire country of France falls on June 22nd, 1940. It takes seven weeks for the German forces to take over this country. And you see Hitler with some of his military leaders. He is right in front of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Next, 
Hitler and the Nazis go further west. The Battle of Britain happens in July 1940 to September 1940. It's the Battle of the Air. The British Royal Air Force faces off against the German Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. And here you see a picture of a German Heinkel III dropping bombs in London in the Battle of Britain. How did Britain win this? Well, one way it won was strong leadership. Here is Winston Churchill. He is the British Prime Minister during World War II, and he says, we are fighting for the future of Western civilization. Germany is defeated, but is not done yet. They invade the Soviet Union to the east in June 1941. Here is the swastikas showing all of the land that the Nazis have taken. They are heading to the Soviet Union, this huge chunk of land. Why? The Germans want Russian raw materials and farms. And the Germans hate the Bolsheviks, the Russian communists. Why did the German attack fail? At first, it didn't. The Germans captured two million Russians, but they did not take into account how large the USSR is, and it stretched 1,800 miles. That is like traveling from here to Dallas, Texas. That's a long trek. So the harshness of winter and an unexpectedly fierce Soviet resistance stopped the German advance. Also, the turning point of the war happens in the Soviet Union. It happens right here in a city called Stalingrad, named after the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, Joseph Stalin. The fighting lasts months from June 1942 to February 1943, and it's bloody. Two million soldiers experience casualties, and the Soviet army successfully defends the major city of Stalingrad. Hitler thought that the USSR could be easily taken. No problem. He was a little delusional. And the German nationalism and morale is severely weakened by this defeat. The German soldiers don't really recover after this. After the Battle of Stalingrad, Joseph Stalin becomes a hero, successfully beating back the Nazis. Let's go to the Pacific Theater and let's talk about Japan. Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, a U.S. military base in Hawaii, in the island of Oahu, on December 7th, 1941. Before there was 9-11, there was December 7th, 1941. How did this happen? Well, the backstory is that the U.S. felt threatened by Japan's growing power in the Pacific. Japan, with Hideki Tojo at the helm, took over the Philippines, Vietnam, and Guam and U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt, here he is, he cuts off oil exports to Japan and he beefs up the U.S. troop presence in the Pacific. FDR's moves, FDR is his nickname, it angers Japan. So much so that bam, violence erupts. At 7.48 a.m. December 7th, the Japanese aerial air assault begins. Many crewmen are still asleep in their bunks when they hear the explosions. And this is one Japanese fighter pilot that participated in the dropping of bombs on Pearl Harbor. In total, American casualties were 2,400 dead. More than a thousand were wounded in this attack. What was the American response? They enter World War II. And Franklin Roosevelt, in a famous speech, talks about America responding. He says, yesterday, December 7, 1941, a day which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the empire of Japan. And a vice admiral who worked for Franklin Roosevelt says, before we're through with them, the Japanese language will be spoken only in hell. America is angry. Let's go back to Europe. America decides to focus most of its attention on the Nazis first and then Japan. So the Allied invasion of Normandy, also called D-Day, happens on June 6th, 1944. British and American forces land on the beaches of Normandy, France. In this map, you see arrows pointing to 
where the Americans, British, and the Canadians land. This is the English Channel. England is on the other side of this body of water. And here's Normandy, France. The mission is to retake France from the Nazis. What does D-Day stand for? D-Day is actually a military term for the day on which an important operation is to begin. That's what that means. So what happens on D-Day? Two million soldiers and 500,000 military vehicles surprise the Nazis before the sun comes up. It's the largest Navy invasion in the history of the world. Americans and British feed Nazis false military intelligence, and the Germans think that they are going to be attacked at a different place on a different day. So German military leaders are afraid to wake Hitler before 10 a.m. They don't think this is going to be a big deal. And German's head commander is busy celebrating his wife's birthday. The Nazis are totally taken by surprise. Here is a picture that shows the scope of the invasion. Look at all of these military carriers, blimps. You see military vehicles. These little dots are military men preparing to invade the French inland and take the Nazis by surprise. And by August 1944, Paris and northern France has been liberated, freed from Nazi control. And this is the beginning of the end for the Nazis. And it led to a push all the way back to Berlin, the capital of Germany, and to Allied victory. The Italians capture and kill Mussolini on April 28, 1945. And two days later, Adolf Hitler in a bunker in Berlin commits suicide. And after that, VE, Victory in Europe Day, is declared on May 8, 1945. So Mussolini and Hitler no longer exist. What leader helps the Allied powers to victory during D-Day? This man, an American, his name is General Dwight Eisenhower. His title, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe. He eventually becomes president in the 1950s, but on this day, he is giving a speech to rally the troops. He says, you are about to embark on the great crusade toward which we have striven. You will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed people of Europe, and the security for ourselves in a free world. That is inspiration, and that's part of why the Allied forces win on D-Day and beyond. Let's go back to the Pacific Theater and talk about Japan and the U.S. The U.S. drops two atomic bombs on Japan in August 1945. What leader makes this decision? U.S. President Harry S. Truman. Here he is. He wants to end this four-year war in the Pacific. It is not coming to a close. And Truman asks Japan and its leaders to surrender or it would face total destruction. He says the... The atom bomb was no great decision. It was merely another powerful weapon in the arsenal of righteousness. He seeks revenge against Japan, who is not surrendering. Why is Japan refusing to surrender? Because surrender goes against its code of honor to fight to the death. It's an old traditional samurai code. So the Japanese don't surrender. And on August 6th, 1945, little boy, this atomic bomb is dropped from a plane called Enola Gay onto the Japanese city of Hiroshima or Hiroshima. 140,000 Japanese die. Some die instantly. They're vaporized and they vanish into thin air. But Japan still does not surrender. So three days later, the U.S. drop a second atomic bomb, August 9th, onto the city of Nagasaki. That bomb is called Fat Man, and it's dropped from a plane called Boxcar. 74,000 Japanese die in this bomb dropping. So we have two atomic bombs that have been dropped on Japan, and Russia declares war on Japan. So VJ Day is inevitable. That is Victory in Japan Day, when the Japanese finally surrender, and that is August 15th, 1945, and World War II comes to a close.
But the question still remains today, the moral question, should the U.S. have dropped two atomic bombs on Japan? And next lesson, we talk about the Holocaust and other genocides. Until that time, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.